What's up Crypto World, Crypto Snake is here and today I want to show you the best part of the most recent interview of CZ, the CEO and founder of Binance Exchange. One of the brightest minds in crypto shared his thoughts and vision on multiple topics, including Binance and its products, investment strategies, algorithmic stablecoins, the current bear market, simulation theory and many more. Let's get started. So um, I think um, Binance is no longer a top-down driven from me. So I don't really decide what products to build, um, what to do, what not to do, uh, especially products features. Um, so we, uh, we, I just set a general direction. We just want to provide, build more tools uh, for people to access Web3 blockchain cryptocurrencies. Um, so that's just general direction. Um, and uh, we have, I don't know, depending on how you, how you count it, we have 30 to 50 or 200 different products in the Binance ecosystem that's using BNB chain, centralized exchanges, decentralized wallets. Um, I can't decide which direction to go. Just guys, let's just build tools that people can use. Um, so it's a much more bottom up grassroots kind of um, approach where different teams are working on different things. Um, and they have freedoms to, exp uh, to experiment. And, uh, sometimes they just build things. And many times actually they do build things that people use. So we have some, we have one of the most downloaded, mo uh, crypto wa mobile wallet, trust wallet. Uh, we now own one of the most visited websites in crypto, coinmarketcaps.com, which is for people to access information. And of course, we have a centralized exchange and we contribute to the BNB chain ecosystem. I think all of those things are very interesting. So um, I'm not a very detailed, hands-on product kind of guy. Um, so we just give them opportunities for them to, for our teams to, uh, uh, to, to, to develop. On the, in the industry side, I think wallets still is a big bottleneck for the industry. So for, for us to go fully decentralized, everybody hold their cryptos on their own. I think we need better wallet technologies. We make it easier for people to store their backups, uh, their backup, like private keys, seeds. If they suddenly, if they, eventually become uh, unavailable at some point. How do they pass those assets to their kids? So a solution like this don't don't really exist yet. I know a bunch of people who are working on it. Uh, we're investing very heavily in these areas. In bull markets, we are quite cautious about spending. Uh, in bear market now, we, in bear markets now, we do have the reserves. So now we're using our our, our reserves um, to uh, uh, to sign partnerships, to do hiring, um, to do investments, acquisitions. Um, sometimes even some bailouts. Not all not all companies are worth bailing out, but of the ones that's worth it, uh, we're doing that. We're also lowering our fees uh, because we have the we, we have the stamina to last. Uh, so that this way we can ease the pain on uh, ease the friction on some of our uh, for our users. So we're doing a number of those things. Uh, we like to do things off cycle. Uh, we believe that in the bear markets is when you should invest and in bull markets, you should actually be more, uh, more cautious. So we kind of took that approach a, a little bit, not fully deliberately, but you know, uh, we, we, but we always knew, uh, for me, this is my, if this is my third bear cycle. So, uh, personally, so I've been through a couple of this. Once you've been through a couple of this and you run a business, you will be more conservative doing bear, doing bull markets when everyone's like really crazy and hot and, you know, thinking that things will just go forever up. You're a little bit more cautious. So we always held more cash reserves than most other industry players. Um, so, but not, there's no right or wrong strategy. Um, so, but we'll just see how it goes. Yeah. So first of all, the word bailout um, has a specific meaning, uh, but different people may attach different meanings to it. But it basically means helping companies um, that are short on cash, uh, uh, most like mostly. Um, but in the real world, there's a spectrum of uh, uh, of, uh, of things. It's not black and white. Mm -hmm. uh, many companies are short are short of money. Doesn't mean most of the bad companies. Um, no, the companies that don't that does not have product market fit. Uh, that's poorly managed. Those things should not be propagated. Those things should not be bailed, bailed out. So um, that's one extreme. And the good companies, of course, they have no trouble raising money and we would love to invest. Uh, and there's somewhere in the middle where, you know, some companies make minor mistakes. They, the first time going through a bear market, they have good products, good teams, et cetera. So we just got to help, help them out a bit. And those things we're perfectly willing to do. And we're looking at a high number of deals like that. Um, I think, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, the U.S. companies make more noise uh, because of the uh, well, there's three arrows technically the best in, the based in Singapore, mm -hmm. um, but then their their investors or people who loan them money who loan them money like Celsius, Voyager, all of those companies are kind of in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So there's like there's quite a lot of stuff happening in the U.S. But there's also a lot of very great companies who are struggling outside of the U.S. and we are also quite active on those fronts. So we're active on on, on the global front. And um, while deals are going on, we we observe conf confidentiality quite strongly. We don't talk about in progress deals. Um, so uh, this is why. But we we have a large number of deals uh, that we're looking at, and some of them are actually good deals. So I think you will see that we we, uh, we will be inv we'll be investing, bailing out, saving multiple uh, multiple projects. Yeah, so to be honest, it's very difficult to, um, to sort of generalize and sort of you know, comment who's good and who's bad. Uh, because, um, you know, of course, when things are going well, um, if your project only gives 2% yield, and then this other company, that, this other project gives 10% yield, guess what? You're going to lose users. And then there's a herd behavior. If somebody else is doing this, I got to do this to stay competitive. Um, and is that right or wrong? Um, and then some people are just unlucky that the timing just happened. You know, uh, they, they don't have cash. Some people are lucky that they have cash reserve. Like, you know, uh, um, so there's luck involved. There's bad decisions, good decisions involved. There's peer pressure. There's, there's herd mentality. All of those things are in play. Um, but fundamentally, uh, when we look at a project to say, hey, do we want to save this project or not? We need to look at like, look, if this project, does this project have a sound team? Do they really have product market fit? Are they savable? Like some projects, you, you know, you can give them a billion dollars and they will just wipe through that. And um, that's, that's, that's obviously not good. So, um, so this, this, it's not a black and white, like, you know, science, uh, uh, mathematical formula that you can calculate in each case. Uh, quite a lot of that are based on subjective feelings, um, et cetera. So, but, but to your second point, um, I, unfortunately, this does allow many of the skeptics about the industry to create this narrative, which is very unfortunate. Um, but there may, there's still many, many strong projects that are going even stronger in this bear market in, uh, in this industry. So we looked at internet, you know, uh, a bunch of e-commerce companies failed, we uh, Webvan, um, diapers.com, a bunch of those guys. But guess what? Amazon is one of the most valuable companies in the world today. So uh, just because there's a few failures doesn't mean the industry, the technology, or all the companies are bad. So we just gotta, we just gotta, we just gotta keep our heads down. We just gotta keep building, and we just gotta provide uh, provide more users with more tools that that they want to use. And then when our users continue to grow, people will say, "Hey, wait, wait a second. There are a few companies that are still growing in this bear market." And hopefully, that I think I always think that building. Great products is the best way to counter any FUD, any negative skepticism, etc. Just be successful, and then all those other things go away. Um, and uh, so that's that. But just because one project failed doesn't mean that's. I don't think it will mean algo algo stable coins will never work. But algo stable coins do have, uh, I would say, in general, do have higher risk than a fiat backed back stable coin. A different type of risk, but much clearer. When you benchmark one, when you use one asset for collateral to, uh, to pack, to pack a different asset, there's always going to be volatility. So, um, um, so that risk is much higher in algo, algo stable coins. This is not to say that fiat backed stable coins have no risks. Um, there are many risks there too. Um, you know, uh, banks can freeze your money. Uh, this happened to USDT. They freeze like $600 million of USDT's money at some point. Um, that caused a lot of issues and they luckily they recover from that. So, uh, and then there are different levels of uh, uh, fiat backed uh, for different fiat backed stable coins. Some use treasury bills, some use commercial paper, some use uh, uh, BUSD uses a very high percentage of um, actual cash uh, in mm -hmm. the bank. So different, different, different approaches. Not to, and not to say that anyone is particularly, they just have different risk profiles. So I think as users, uh, or as industry players, and as regulators, we need to educate the masses. So we need to increase education on the users. Uh, we should be teaching people about different risks, about stable coins, et cetera, in school. Uh, right now, I don't think any school have courses cover this. So, um, um, so uh, and then as users, they need to de they need to understand the different risks and decide what's good for them and what's the right portfolio for them. So um, I think that that education part is really important. So. Long story, but I think just because of one failed project doesn't mean the whole thing is bad. But that one project did shine a 
put a big light on some of the deficiencies or some of the high risks in this area, which、mm-hmm. is very important for us to learn. Headquarter. What does that mean? Does that mean the office、uh, where the senior management are? Does it mean the company registration,、uh, where you pay taxes? All of those other,、uh, all of those things.、Um, so,、um, and when we started, you know, five years ago, there was very little uh, uh, regulatory frameworks, and in fact, most of the regulators we spoke to, they clearly just said, like three, four years ago, when when we spoke to Singapore AMS. They clearly told us we don't regulate this industry.、Um, you know, you're off.、Um, we're not involved. So back in those days, you know, we were embracing the decentralized philosophy, and it worked really well for us. We can hire talent globally, and people can people don't have don't have to waste time traveling, starting commuting.、Um, they can work, and we run a 24 by 7 exchange. And having people globally in different time zones covers that. We always have somebody uh, 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 um, who's awake and who's looking at um, uh, who's looking at the community, who's looking at the system. That worked beautifully, but then, as you, as you as you know, when you talk with regulators, the regulators first question is, "Where's your headquarters? Where's your office? Where's your local staff?" And that makes sense. Look, they 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 come from this background that you know over the last seventy, ninety, a hundred years, they formed this this、uh, this this, this、um, customs or this the the uh, uh, this rules. So they expect you have a local M A O R O, your local com- compliance. Your、uh, you have a local he- a building that people can go and complain.、Um, you have to have local people who are legal representatives. And we said, look, if we want, if we want this, what's the best way forward for this industry for us to help this industry grow as a centralized business, as a centralized exchange? The best way is to give them give them that structure. So we set up local offices, local entities, hire local compliance, legal, this whole this, this whole structure. Um, but today we still have a large number of people, you know, engineers, customer support that works remotely in a distributed fashion, and so we have a hybrid of those two. And when people ask about our headquarters, offices, etc., we have now we now have offices in Dubai, Bahrain, Abu Dhabi, France, Paris, Italy. So we have we have the structure set up now. So now we 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 satisfy both sides. It's actually fantastic. Um, Binance US, um, the US entity in Binance. Uh, well, for Binance,、um, they got four state. They got four new state licenses in the last six months. So they're getting new licenses in the U.S. So I forgot to mention that because I usually can, we kind of cover that, kind of cover them out mentally、um, mm-hmm. and, and legally. So、uh, include Louisiana,、um, some of the bigger states actually. So some of the states that are hard, that takes longer to get licenses. Binance U.S. has like forty five, forty six state licenses in in the U.S. So、uh, and no, and they're still getting the last few remaining. I think they're still missing two or three、uh, licenses. So they're, they're they're getting new licenses, and that's a that's a very strong stamp of appro- of approval, and also embracing regulations. And、um, their the number of users are growing. It's it's a very healthy business.、Um, so、uh, Binance US is doing fantastic.、Um, and、uh, we had a little bit of issue last year with some personnel issues. We changed some personnel, but now it's stabilized. It's fantastic. So、uh, so yeah. So it's not like we're neglecting the US. I sp- I don't spend much time on on the US myself. But you know Binance US does have very、uh, good presence there. And speaking of the regulations in the US,、um, US has. Actually, one of the best banking supports for cryptocurrency exchanges anywhere in the world. So, in the U.S.,、um, cryptocurrency exchanges like Binance U.S., Coinbase can deduct from users' bank accounts automatically every month,、uh, giving the users one-time approval through the ACH protocol.、Mm-hmm. Um, the, uh, I think Korea has something similar.、Uh, most other countries don't have this level of integration for banks for banking support to cryptocurrency exchanges. So, I think that's a fantastic thing. U.S. is more strict、uh, on you know yield generating products, interest generating products,、um, uh, futures, etc. So th- they're they're more restrictive on those those type of product offerings. So different countries a little bit different.、Um, it's not to say one is more、uh, like there's no like it's not clear one place is globally better or ev- better in every aspect、uh, than other than other places. So and U.S. is also quite interesting given that you know、uh, there's a lot of focus on U.S. U.S. is very divided, right? So U.S. has so many different,、um, so many different political parties, so many different agencies, etc. And even in the Senate, you can see that some senators are very pro-innovation. Some senators want to like let's protect the U.S. dollar to to the maximum to for the longest time for as long as we can, and then not have the next thing. Uh, well, maybe they don't realize that they would not have the next thing. So, but you know, this debate、um, is a democracy. So、um, yeah, so it's kind of interesting to see different.、Uh, so I wouldn't say U.S. is completely behind. U.S. is you know strict on a few areas, but they're also advancing in a few other areas. 
Um, I do. Yeah, I, so as I explained in that blog post, uh, I do believe we live in a simulation. But uh, just because of that, it doesn't mean that we should not take things seriously. Uh, life is still very meaningful. Work is still very meaningful. We still got to take all of these things very seriously. Um, but it does take a little bit of an edge off uh, when you're dealing with, with higher pressure situations. Um, part of the simulation, some things are programmed, you can't change them. Some things, are, uh, ha some things have some randomness to it, and there's an element of luck. I've been super lucky already. I mean, if you're not in a simulation, like, no one gets this lucky. So, uh, um, yeah, so I'm very grateful for that, and we just got to make the best out of this simulation thing. We don't know what kind of simulation we're in. So it could be us simulating ourselves, which means that if we die, we just wake up and that's perfect. That's fantastic. But it could be, we could be simulated by a higher dimension being, like how we simulate Super Mario. When he dies, he doesn't get to talk to us. Uh, he just, he just, he just vanishes. Um, and uh, um, so we don't know. Uh, that's the beauty. Once, once we know, if we know what kind of simulation it is, it kind of loses purpose. Um, then if I know that if I die, I'll wake up, then I will not take then there's a lot of things that I would not take too seriously uh, or seriously at all. Um, but because we don't know, uh, it makes all the simulation more, much more meaningful. Um, so we can't, it, just because we're in simulation doesn't mean that we don't take things seriously. We still got, so I still work, I still take work very seriously. Um, but I don't take myself too seriously. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't think of myself as a really important person and all this other stuff. According to CZ and his vision, Binance is way more complex than just a company built around one person. This humble guy is moving Binance and its philosophy towards full decentralization. Decentralized decisions, decentralized offices and huge support of DeFi space. I really love to hear that. CZ is a perfect example of how a true leader should think and act. This humble and smart guy is focusing on his company. He doesn't criticize competitors and he spreads the power between the teams he trusts. If you ask me about BNB and its future, not financial advice, but I'm very, very bullish. Huddle strong, my friends. I'll catch you later. <laughs>